All right, welcome to the next lesson of our tutorial series on how to use the Photon Chat plugin. For this lesson, we're going to be going over all of the code for sending a public chat message. And to get started, I'm going to click the play button in my project. And we've already gone through all of this, so I'm going to type in a username and click the join chat button. And so this is as far as we've got in the previous videos where we've set the username, we've connected to the Photon chat server, and we've subscribed to a chat channel. So here we now have our chat room objects enabled. Now the next thing that we'll look at is our chat input field. This object has a public function with a string parameter set to the on value change event. This function belongs to our Photon chat manager script and is called type chat on value change. And when you select this function, you want to make sure that it's found within the dynamic string section and not the static parameters. Well, let's go look at that function right now. So here we have our public void function called type chat on value change with a string parameter called value in. Inside this function, you'll notice that we have a new variable which is called current chat. This is a string variable, and I'm setting this variable equal to the value in parameter. This will make it so that whatever we type into that input field will be saved into our current chat variable, and we'll be able to use this variable for later. So now let's go back to Unity, and now if I type a message into the chat input field, our current chat variable should now equal the string hello. The next thing that we'll look at is the send button. This button has two public functions paired to the onClick event. One of them is for sending private messages, and the other is for sending public messages. Both of these functions belong to our Photon Chat Manager script, and the one that we'll be looking at in this lesson is called Submit Public Chat on Click. So here we have that public function, which is a void function, and it's called Submit Public Chat on Click. Inside this function, the first thing that you'll notice is that we have an if statement with a new variable, which is called private receiver. This variable is a string variable, which we will later use for setting the recipient of our private messages. But in this if statement, we're checking to see if this string variable is equal to an empty string. Now inside this if statement, we have a special function, which is how we send our public message. And this function belongs to the chat client class, and it's called publish message. So we have chat client class dot publish message, and this function requires two parameters. The first is the chat channel that we want to publish this message to. So I just have a hard coded string because there's only going to be one public chat per region. And the second parameter is the message that we are sending and so I'm passing in our current chat variable. After this line of code, we then want to clear out the chat field and our current chat variable. And so I have this chat field variable, which is a UI input field, and we're calling dot text and setting it equal to an empty string. We're then calling our current chat variable and setting that to an empty string as well. Now that's how we send a chat message, and remember that this submit public chat on click function is paired to our send button. So when I click the send button, you can see how it clears out our input field. Now the last thing that we need to talk about for this video is how to get this message to display in this text box. And for that, there's a special callback function called onGetMessage. This function was added to our script when we implemented the iChat client listener interface. And this function will be executed anytime a public chat message is published to a channel that we are currently subscribed to. And as you can see, there's a number of parameters. The first is the channel name that this message was sent to. The second is an array of strings for the different senders. And the third is an array of objects for the messages that are sent. Inside this function, the first thing that I'm doing is creating a temp variable of type string, which is called message. And I'm setting it equal to an empty string. I then have a for loop where we're looping through all of the senders. I'm then formatting a string comprised of the current sender and the current message, and they'll be separated by a colon. I'm then saving that string into our temp message variable. And on the next line of code, we have a new variable, which is called chat display. This is a UI text 
variable, which will be for the text object that appears in this box. And what I'm doing is I'm adding my temp string variable to the end of the text field, but I'm adding it with a new line character. And what this does is it makes it so that whenever we receive a new message, that message is always published onto a new line in our text field. And that covers receiving and displaying public messages. Now there's one other thing that I'd like to teach you that will help with the flow of your chat system. And that's found within the update function. So right here in the update function, I have an if statement where I'm checking to see if our chat field dot text is not equal to an empty string and if the player presses the return key. And so I have input dot get key key code dot return. And then inside this if statement, I'm calling two functions, but I'm only going to mention one of them which is our submit public chat on click function. Now what this all does is it makes it so that when the player is typing and they press the return key, it will then act as if we've pressed the send button and it'll publish whatever we've typed into our chat input field. So once you have all that, you'll then want to save this script and go back to Unity. Now inside Unity, you'll need to set some variables for your Photon Chat Manager script. The first is the chat input field, which is this bottom chat field right here. And the second is the chat display, which is the text object inside this white box. You then just need to make sure that you have the function set for the on value change event for your chat input field and the on click event for your send button. Once you have that, you should have a working chat system for public messages. In the next video, we'll go over how to send and receive private messages. So make sure that you go check that out.